So the two major things to talk about here are, first of all, the method for creating this full set of tubes. And the second is the ability to click on the label of the tube and change its characteristics and also or the label characteristics and and also get some information about the tube so we're sort of killing two birds in one stone with this one in that we're getting rid of the uh, the extra space that having the volume displayed on the side was doing and we're also getting better information for the user about the the tube and its contents uh, so if we have a look at the, the the way that that tube label works it's triggered by this middle trigger which is very similar to the top trigger in that it's just a a, a place for a collider that has a script on it that script is this tube middle trigger script which when it's pressed and it's pressed of course by it being triggered like the top trigger by the raycast action so when the raycast hits this thing called middle trigger it's going to go and trigger the function edit tube label in there and what edit tube label does is it records where the mouse was when or everything happened what the originating object is that, that's caused the triggering to happen and it's also recording the volume and it's going to pass that information to the label editor script which is our other new script and what that does is it sets a whole bunch of parameters within it that having activated the panel then show the information the tube number the volume also show the input field on the on the label and when the user types something into that input field and presses the tick it's going to send that information back to the middle trigger script and that will change the label so we've got some info this nice sort of opening of the panel interacting with the panel saving it sending the information back and thereby changing the label on the front of the tube. Now it's quite important that the text mesh pro field here is made um, not a raycast target. So that's that's quite a vital thing to stop the raycast being intercepted by this label uh, so that it does actually get through to this middle trigger in the middle of the tube. Now this should be quite flexible in future because we should be able to make it so that when the label editor gets information from another type of game object like a plate or a petri dish or something like that it should be able to communicate back to the right thing but we'll see. Um, so the, the major other change was this business with the scenario setup. First of all what do you have to go through when you change all the compounds? Well, you have to define a whole new bunch of set of compounds. You have to define what drop down menus you're going to have. And then, of course, you have to define what will happen when the drop down menu is chosen. So if we choose the one for Tris, then we need to make it so that it's changing the concentration of the zero compound to whatever you want it to be. Now that's a little bit painful, uh, not too bad. I mean basically every time someone wants a new context you need to change what compounds they're going to be dealing with, what menu options you're going to give them and what the consequences of choosing those menus options are. We've also added two other things, the which component is going to provide the color and what the extinction coefficient is going to be. And that means that after we define the components, we can define them there. And in any script that needs to do anything with color, like the pipette action script or the liquid uh, in the tube script, we know which compound concentration to take into effect 
into account when we're, we're deciding what the color should be. And when we do our gathering tube data, we know which uh, compound to look at in order to calculate the absorbance and what the extinction coefficient should be. So that's a really nice way of centralizing those operations and also taking away the magic numbers that used to be here. Remember, we used to have 6.9 here and we used to have to say which component it was that was causing the color change. Well, now we can just refer back to the scenario creation script and we've got no magic numbers in there anymore. Now, the big change, of course, is this ability to make uh, a, mul a, a set and it all takes place in this set of lines here. First of all, we've got a little function that will make a tube um, given a particular menu choice, given a particular volume, with a particular label, and the only other thing that we record about it is what sequence tube it is, because when we make each tube, we want them to move along. So each tube needs to have an X coordinate, which is a bit bigger than the last one. So we just keep a tab on what number tube we are so we can make that decision. So when we tell this function to work, it's going to be coming in with um, a menu, a volume, so it's going to set the right volume up. It's going to be coming in with a drop down choice, so it'll choose the right option there and then it'll create the tube. All the other stuff here is just so that we can keep track of which tube it is in the sequence, so which tube it is in the list of tubes, and then we can do two other things to it. We can change its label and we can move it to a position which is all a bit to the right of the one that's just been made. Useful thing to note here, after we've done all that, it's good to reset the drop down to the default of zero, the water option, just in case the user goes and makes a, a new tube which is not connected with this set. So triggering all of that just requires a little list of, of presets like, you know, I want a tube which is going to be 2000 microliters using the water option and I'm going to label it water and this is the, before we do any of this, this is the, the number of the, the tubes that were in the whole solution. Again, this is just so that we can identify the tube and put it in the right place. So that works quite nicely, but I think that in you know, in a, in a couple of iterations time, we're going to be trying to do things on racks because racks are easier to, to sort of group tubes, uh, move them around uh, and do sort of consistent functions on them. It looks a bit neater as well. So, but this is quite a good interim option. Uh, and that's sort of about it really for this, for this solution. We, those are the major changes and, uh, and, yeah, we'll see how that works in an assignment capacity, maybe in the next, the next session.